ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायणम नमस्कृत नरम चरोतम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथोजय मुदीर नष्टप्रायशु अभद्रेशु नित्यम भागवत सेवया भगवती उत्तम श्लोके भक्तिर्भवती नैष्टकी वे रीडिंग फ्रॉम श्रीमद भागवतम कैंटो टेन चैप्टर सिक्सटी सिक्स एंटाइटल्ड पौंड्रक द फॉल्स वासुदेव टेक्स्ट नाइनटीन अथाह पौंड्रक शौरी भो भो पौंड्रक यूतवाक्यन मह तान्यास्त्रुत्जाते अथ पौंड्रक शौरी भो भो पौंड्रक यूतवाक्यन मह तान्यस्त्रुजा ते अथ पौंड्रक शौरी भो भो पौंड्रक यूतवाक्यन मह तान्यस्त्रुत्सा ते भूतवाक्यन मह तान्यास्त्रुताते पौंड्रक शौरी ओबो पौंड्रक यूतवाक्यन मह तान्यस्त्रुत्सा ते अथ पौंड्रक शौरी भोबो पौंड्रक यूतवाक्यन मह तान्यस्त्रुत्सा ते माताजी अथ देन आह सेड पौंड्रक टू पौंड्रक शौरी लॉर्ड कृष्ण भोबो पौंड्रक माय डियर पौंड्रक यथ दोज विच भवान योर गुड सेल्फ दूत ऑफ द मैसेंजर वाक्यन थ्रू द वर्ड्स माम टू मी आह स्पोक अबाउट तानी दोज अस्त्रानी वेपन्स उत्स जमा मी आय एम रिलीजिंग ते अन टू यू ट्रांसलेशन एंड पर्पोर्ट बाय डिसाइपल्स ऑफ हिज डिवाइन ग्रेस ए सी भक्तिवेदांत स्वामी शिला प्रभुपाद translation lord krishna then addressed pandrak my dear pandrak the very weapons you spoke of through your messenger i now release unto you purport shila prabhupad writes as follows in krishna at this time lord krishna told pandrak pandrak you requested me to give up the symbols of lord vishnu specifically my disc now i will give it to you i will give it up to you be careful you falsely declare yourself to be vasudev imitating yourself 
uh, imitating myself. You falsely declare yourself to be Vasudev, imitating myself. Therefore, no one is a greater fool than you. From this statement of Krishna's, it is clear that any rascal who advertises himself as God is the greatest fool in human society. Om Ajnanta Mirandasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manau Bishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Svapadantikam Vandeham Shri Gurum Shri Yuta Padakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavamsha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunathan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Vita Shri Vishakhan Vitamscha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Anamami Hari Priye Vanchakalpa Tarubhyascha Vipa Sindhuva Evacha Patitanam Bhavanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namo Namaha Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadiv Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna So in this ongoing story of King Poundrak because uh, by now the story is very clear and you heard this many times but perhaps one point may, may, may have missed your attention. See, when we hear the story of uh, Poundrak, it looks quite absurd. You know, somebody, you know, it's like someone who, uh, it's like you come in front of a mountain and you will challenge and say, I'm going to lift the mountain. I will say that it's, uh, it's a physical impossibility. Something like that where, uh, here a person comes and challenges Vasudev and says he's going to be king. But uh, so we may get the impression that you know he's like a clown, you know, he's a, a buffoon. Actually he was a very powerful king and he uh, was very intelligent, he controlled his kingdom and uh, he had, as we see, the he, when Krishna goes to challenge him, it accepts his challenge, he comes out with his uh, two Akshavani divisions and his friend comes out with three other Akshavani divisions. So uh, he was able to control and uh, motivate people. So perhaps you may get the impression that you know, he was just like a eccentric nut who, you know, just somebody who comes on the road and says something and you may just laugh and go away. So when you see him in that light, then you may start recognizing that perhaps he was even more powerful than I am and I'm also Poundrak uh, not I may be, I am we all are and we need to so see what to what extent we are Poundraks in our life so the Srila Prabhupada says that uh, in today's uh, Kali Yuga, this is a problem that there are so many cheaters and jugglers and magicians <clears throat> and it is not a surprise it's not so surprising that we see so many jugglers and cheaters because they're going to be there with law matter of law and of demand and supply if there is a demand then there will be supply if you have people who want 
that who want to be fooled then they will uh, always find lots of people so somebody may claim uh, to be god somebody may claim to be uh, doing various tricks and uh, performing uh, magic and also promising various things there may be few but uh, and we need not focus our entire attention on them but the point is that we get what we deserve as it is said and why do i say that because krishna has given us common sense and intelligence that everybody has been given that so as we have as the basic principle of any uh, knowledge is that if you need to understand something you need to go to the right source as we have said so many times that somebody wants to learn music uh, he will go to the right uh, books and uh, will make sure that he does not go to a carpenter to hear to understand music or to a physician he has to find someone who knows music similarly for any trait or any knowledge that you want you would go to the right source the right books the right people the right authority but when it comes to spirituality or people just uh, want to uh, most of the times especially in india we feel because we have there is a certain uh, uh, spirituality uh, an adherence to religion uh, which also has many pluses um, which makes people want to um, to at least restrain themselves in from some of the nefarious activities but it also gives the impression that i know everything and i don't need to understand um, from any r- right authorities and this is where the problem lies so if you have the so one can't say i was just fooled into it yeah in some cases you may be led astray but and maybe uh, it is our karma to suffer also but to a large extent it is what we want if you want uh, immediate relief from suffering it is that, that anxiety is so strong that we want to just uh, have uh, an immediate relief then we will f- try to find any kind of solution the example is given of a mirage you know a mirage is uh, an illusion in the desert if you are going we are not too near the desert here but if you go to uh, a desert and for miles and miles you don't see for hundreds of miles sometimes you don't see any sign of life no water and you may and if you run out of water you're desperate you're really desperate you, you just want any drop of water and actually the mirage is uh, it's it's an illusion which uh, you know it gives you the impression that uh, in the distance you can see you know some sparkling fresh water and you run towards it and uh, you know you just take it and before you know it you, you just you so hoping against hope and then then you realize you're eating hot sand so it is like that that if there is an illusion uh, and you chase after illusion then you are likely to get uh, uh, well disillusion to at the at the least Uh, uh, Shrimad Bhagavatam uh, Sukhdev Goswami Maharaj uh, says at one place that uh, uh, people uh, want cheap blessings and they go after uh, the uh, uh, wherever they can find and uh, it is and he compares that with um, somebody who runs into a river you know for relief from the heat and does not discriminate about the level of water and then he jumps in and breaks his head because it was very shallow so when we are desperate in a in a mirage uh, analogy uh, the person who's desperate for water really uh, about to die of thirst uh, he sen- loses his, uh, his sense of discrimination he cannot discriminate a bit uh, between what is water what is not so when you're driven to that level so therefore we have to see that we do not get driven to that level when when we if we are so desperate to avoid misery and uh, we want some relief from our present pain from our suffering and we want pleasure so desperately so badly then that uh, illusion um, will perhaps uh, will likely affect our sense of discrimination between what we can uh, what is um, correct and what is not so uh, 
Therefore, the aspect of uh, controlling our senses becomes important. If you see uh, the uh, reality today, that there are so many examples we can see, like, uh, that where Prahlad Maharaj's words come true. Prahlad Maharaj says that if one does not um, take guidance from the spiritual uh, authority, from Krishna or his representatives, from the bona fide authority, and when one is on the material speculative platform, then the solutions that you get to your problem are oftentimes worse than your problem. And this is where you don't have to go too far to see that uh, we see uh, that what we see as progress at one time, then again it has it throws up its own challenges, um, and we have to then find the solutions to that. For instance. Uh, Oh, this is the industrial age, the last couple of hundred years there has been rapid industrialization, but then it has also caused its uh, problems of urban rural, rural divide, not just physically but also socially, emotionally, mentally. It has also thrown up issues of pollution, of uh, shortage of water, also thrown up um, psychologically also, you know, people who uh, the earning levels are much higher in, in, uh, in factories and urban settings. So, because the consciousness would be that it's I, me and mine, what is good for me and that is an extended family. It could be not just me but it could be my family, it could be people whom I am concerned with, it could be little, it could be maybe in one country. But then if we extend that further, then that becomes extremely um, dangerous. Similarly, uh, even uh, basic things like freedom, uh, everybody, uh, you know, the, uh, everybody cherishes freedom. We say liberty is the most important aspect. Nobody wants to be under captivity of any sort. But uh, if, if it is misused, so there is nothing wrong with uh, freedom, but it is a question of uh, consciousness and how we are guided, how we use our freedom. If we uh, you misuse it to the extent that where, again, it only means that uh, I am free to do what I want, nobody can tell me, I don't need any authority, I am. I don't need, uh, I'm not subordinate to anyone, I'm the controller, then that becomes a problem. And you can see that manifest in so many ways. Just recently, um, the government, uh, uh, we are not looking at the approach of the government, but we are looking at the intent. The government's intent was to ban uh, pornographic sites. And there was an uproar by people uh, you know, saying that uh, you're affecting my liberty, we're adults, we can do what we want. Uh, so, this is, uh, in a, uh, then uh, there's another example where uh, maybe a year ago or a year and a half ago, um, because America also is going through, uh, the world is going through an economic uh, challenge and in the US uh, a couple of billionaires, very well-meaning billionaires, um, who they actually suggested that they, uh, the billionaires, somehow they are uh, paying taxes uh, lower than the general average. They pay between 15 and 20 percent. So they said that uh, maybe 2 percent tax could be increased and that could help the, uh, we voluntarily we should actually uh, increase 2 percent. And the uproar that came from the others, which is, uh, you know, there's 700 billionaires there, that it, even, it was completely squashed. It was considered a very negative thing. Now, economic aspect is one thing, uh, whether the, it makes economic sense is not the point now. The point is that what is our intent? If we feel that um, if, if I am worth X and I cannot give it to others, let them earn on their own and let them come up. It's a free society and uh, I have done my own hard work, I have come up my own way, I have made my own money, let him do it. That uh, he, Why doesn't he do it? We then are saying that there is no place for God, there is no place for uh, trying to understand how we want to completely submerge the fact that we were given this opportunity, we came in this family, we were given this education, we got the circumstantial changes that happen in our life. Nothing. We just want to say that and then we don't even want to look beyond. It's like an ostrich uh, ment mentality that we put our head in the sand when we see problems. And the problem is that we're all growing old and we're all going to leave this uh, world and then suddenly it is upon us. So when we leave this world, we'll, we then at that time we have no answers. Uh, and, and, and then the remaining who are here, we do not think, we don't want to discuss that the person is dead, you know, as soon as his body or her body is uh, lying there, 
even if whatever relation we want to dispose it of and then that's the end of it you know if some memories remain a little bit of sentiment remains for a year or two and then uh, you know we are back to our life we don't take the lessons so the the point is that accepting uh, the fact that we have um, the presence of god is uh, has to be a most important uh, element of whatever we do it uh, often times it can be in the forefront often times at the back of our mind in whatever activities we do like arjun when he was fighting the war you know he he did it uh, as a surrender to krishna he changed his opinion after he heard from krishna but he he used it entirely for when he was under the guidance of krishna so but at the same time he was he did not reduce his uh, uh, prowess you know he put all his focus and uh, all his um, all his effort into the uh, into the um, the skills and the gift that he was given because he was extremely gifted so there are uh, so many people who have got tremendous gifts you know so much intellect uh, or maybe so, so much talent uh, some capabilities are there so many ways the question is how we use it we can also see that even the political system of democracy certainly um, we would like to say that in in theory we say we elect our own uh, leaders but again it depends not only on what we think and what we want if somebody promises us something and we just vote for that and then we find that the person is um, often times enriching himself but not doing anything or maybe sincere but uh, caught up in a system where they are only there for self preservation and um, their main purpose is to see that how they can be there now for the next 20 30 years rather than what activities need to be done or to take unpopular decisions but the correct decisions that's then we can't blame anyone because the system is such where um, it is it may say uh, that all 1.2 billion people in india have the right to uh, have a living in democracy and maybe 700 million people will vote but uh, the in practice what happens is that uh, there will be always some who will sway the others and the so called intelligence here or the uh, in various aspects of uh, society but then so much depends on the, the leadership we call them but so much depends on their uh, thinking on their consciousness on how they see on their selflessness to what extent they are willing to uh, put others before them to what extent they are uh, not keen to promote themselves there are so many aspects to it that we are the world is starving for seeing genuine leadership but if we find that then it does not matter really what kind of uh, system is there it is a matter what kind of consciousness our leaders have so that's the difference between the uh, what we see in the historical ages when yudhishthira maharaj was there amrish maharaj and they ruled the entire planet but their lord ram his greatest example that we have of uh, ram rajya was because his entire anxiety was to see that every as every person in the uh, in under uh, all the subjects were uh, happy every person and he he took it upon himself personally not a single person should be unhappy so that kind of uh, ideals and objectives would be of course very difficult to understand it's impossible to to look at it in today's context but at least if we see some aspects of it then uh, we we uh, we can have some hope but today uh, the society uh, and it's not just in india we see in uh, every aspect today there's so much of conflict to a large extent it is because two things one uh, because each one uh, thinks uh, th- from their own point of view either as individuals or as a community or as a race or as a caste or as a, a group and the other thing is that the leadership is also in a self preservation mode to a large extent or they may be having a certain strong objective but it is only for a, a narrow group of people a small group of people not for the welfare of the of the whole if it is for the welfare of the whole then we would actually uh, see the level of the spirit because only on a spiritual level when we say spiritual doesn't mean that one has to externally just show himself or herself to be you know falling at the in front of a deity to acknowledge that the reality is that we are not this body and that we are the soul is the basic principle and if we all equal on the level of the soul 
then we have to find out how what is the purpose of the soul what is the what the soul wants and what is the obligation of the soul to its creator to the super soul so this becomes now irrespective of whether we are born in this country or that background is this or that gender is this or that doesn't matter education this or that is absolutely of no relevance we are all on the same level and therefore at one stroke it becomes a united world united nations uh, is an institution but today we see there more and more countries being created rather than uh, because of the sectarian needs of uh, the people so therefore uh, whether you see democracy whether you see liberty or whether you see so any aspect that we uh, which is and these are worthy objectives that we preserve our independence we have each person is unique there's no doubt about it but if it is not mixed with the uh, it's not combined with the right consciousness guidance then the uh, it can be a very potent uh, cocktail which could really be um, damaging actually even in terms of uh, something basic like health you see there's so much of advancement that is uh, taken place and no doubt people's uh, lives longevity has increased uh, earlier people would live uh, up to say 60 years uh, 50 or 55 years when when i was a student i i remember the average age in india for a male was about 55 or so and for a female for about 52 i think and now it is in the probably 72 or 74 so it has increased in some country it is up to 80 or 85 average age but one has to that is from one side but the other side is that uh, that uh, whether it is 50 or 70 or 80 or 90 we are going to go anyway so uh, we should not miss that point so while we work towards it we need to also know that that extra 10 or 15 years then what secondly that extension also is it done with the selfless uh, completely selfless motives of seeing that how people's uh, quality of life uh, it is there is a certain uh, it is not that it is devoid of that there is a certain feeling that there is that yes they should people will benefit but there is also uh, not escaping the fact that there is a commercial motive and there are other motives which make people work the the pharma uh, the health industry the ph pharmaceutical industry itself i mean the, the profits in a year are over 8 lakh crores now if if it is done only to uh, and if it is if it is only for a particular health purpose uh, the particular uh, stream of medicine uh, and goes to the extent of completely uh, c considering other streams like say Ayurveda or homeopath or naturopath or acupuncture as uh, uh, not recognized in many parts of the world they don't recognize it then there's something wrong that is obviously seen that it is not for the general health we're doing but also because we see what can promote only one aspect of medicine so while we shouldn't be against that but on the other hand we should be seeing that the purpose has to be the overall well-being of people and in that uh, certainly everyone makes an effort and uh, there will be some who will be successful, some will not be so successful. And then also there are effects of that. I just read recently that uh, um, in the US for instance there are 2 million people who are addicted to painkillers. Now uh, you know uh, painkillers are necessary uh, and some uh, diseases it becomes extremely painful. But if you go to the extent of becoming uh, addicted, then that creates another problem. Two million is a very large number. And the same article also said that, uh, you know, 80% of heroin addicts, you know, heroin is a drug which is one of the most prominent and dangerous drugs which, are, which drugs you, uh, drug addicts use. So 80% of drug addicts uh, who were hooked on heroin, um, in this survey had said that initially they started with painkillers or at some point in time they were also using a lot of painkillers. So this becomes a, a potentially dangerous thing that we don't know when we cross that limit. So therefore, uh, if we talk of advancement, we have to talk of advancement with the right consciousness to see the purpose is what? The purpose is that how can we promote prevention as much as cure? Uh, how many people? I, I've gone through a, a, a heart a condition about 10 years ago and I remember when I was um, uh, it, it happened almost very suddenly in the sense that uh, it wasn't a very serious thing but then I was operated and uh, I 
just got myself checked and then found that at some block, so I was asked that you should go for a uh, angioplasty on on the spot. And I, I said, I'll leave it to you. Um, but after that, uh, for the next few years, uh, I didn't know that I would have to take some medicines for the rest uh, uh, of my life now, just to keep the blood thin, etc. But I never got any advice that I should lose weight, that I should uh, exercise more, that I should have less stress. Nobody uh, told this. It was only later, uh, two, three years later, a friend of a uh, devotee here who uh, took me to another, uh, who, another cardiologist who actually is, though he's a cardiologist, he follows another stream, but um, means he basically on prevention and he has 100% success. So, because common sense. So, uh, the goal has to be to improve health. The goal is not to promote a certain medicine or to at the expense of everything. At a certain level, yes, you would need to uh, develop some medicines, but what is the larger goal? So each of these, um, the point is that each of these uh, advancements, whether it is uh, modern factories, whether it is um, health uh, improvements, whether it is uh, uh, our liberty that we ensure, but if it is, uh, it, 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 if it, if it is misused, then it's not a blessing. So when Sukhdev Maharaj says that people are after uh, cheap blessings, um, what do we mean by cheap blessings? Now, uh, cheap blessings could be, uh, blessings could be a benefit, blessings could be, uh, it may seem to be a benefit because we are asking for it, but he considers cheap blessings as those which are, let's say, um, you go and uh, go to Babaji or go to Sanyasi, go to God, go to demigods, then you ask for a thing that, uh, you know, please let me get through my uh, BCom examination or I, my PhD or please let me, you know, let my uh, investment in this uh, work well or let me, let my business venture work well, uh, let me get a very nice uh, husband for my daughter, uh, things like that. Um, we, first of all, going to the Lord is uh, always uh, necessary. Uh, ideal is not to go with any desire. So even if you go with some desires, at least let's not stop going. But we should recognize that um, the Shastras would consider this, that if you're asking for, and if you don't get, then you go to somebody else, till you get somebody who promises that. Oftentimes that is the case. And if you do get, then you think that that is the only way. You put your faith only in that situation that, I, because of this, so you, you, become, you could become fatalist and you will expect to get um, in the same manner. And we have our own Acharyas, I mean, Srila Prabhupada, there was an instance when once he was walking and he, one person came running after him, Swamiji, Swamiji, uh, please give me your blessings. Prabhupada kept walking uh, and he, this person just went on and he was falling at, uh, him, uh, at his feet and saying that, uh, I don't know, Swamiji, please, please. Uh, he kept badgering him for 10 minutes till Prabhupada reached and then he uh, sat down at a place and then he fell at his feet and said, Swamiji, please give me your blessings. So Prabhupada uh, looked at him and said very seriously, he said, uh, I give you my blessings that all your material life is finished. <laughs> so it was such a shock to him, you know, he fell back and he, he said, no, no, Swamiji, I need, so, you know, give me some other blessings. So he said, no, this is the only blessings I need. So of course Prabhupada did not, uh, was uh, staying out of his compassion. What he went is kept, your material life means your attachment to material things and which, which, uh, which means that our strong desire to only look at the material objects and go after that. Uh, so he said it out of genuine compassion. So uh, a genuine sadhu would not be looking at our external condition and saying that because we are from this caste or this background or this education level or this uh, material background, um, a certain class of society, etc. Uh, everybody ha is in the same boat. Everybody has the same opportunity. And uh, a sadhu is one who, a genuine sadhu is one who gives uh, every opportunity, uh, every effort to bring us closer to Krishna, to try to help us being detached from our material uh, life. Whatever we have got, we should do the best we, uh, with our full effort, with unrestrained effort, but with the right consciousness. Um, it may be even, a, and it doesn't mean that if someone is given a lot, means uh, and that externally we value it accordingly. And somebody who just uh, 
has no material benefit, but nevertheless uses his or her um, guidance, uh, understanding uh, fully in her character or his character, in his development of the children and um, uh, in various services that they can do, that is equally on the same level. So services are never looked at uh, look by the quantum, services are always looked at with the consciousness we do. Even uh, uh, Prabhupada's uh, Guru Maharaj was Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Thakur and his Guru was uh, God Keshadas Babaji Maharaj. Now God Keshadas Babaji Maharaj was uh, a genuine Babaji who actually shunned uh, people kept coming to him for blessings and he, he deliberately was staying uh, at one time he was staying uh, under a boat on the banks of the Ganges at a place where people were, came to uh, pass this stool and urine. So obviously people would just come there and uh, the idea was that they would not bother him because it was such an awful place to be and he was staying there so that he people would not uh, bother him. That was his purpose. Still one person kept coming and saying, um, Babaji Maharaj, please give me my blessing. You know, my daughter is getting married and I want this, I want that. Exactly. So then uh, Gaurakishwati Babaji Maharaj said that I, I bless you that you stay with me for the rest of your life and do bhajans. So he ran away and he never came back again. <laughs> Even then he, people used to keep coming to him. Then finally he went, actually moved and he went and stayed in a latrine. Even then people used to come, so then he kept the latrine door also locked. So uh, it, uh, they, I mean they, um, they consider it a pathetic situation to uh, accept or to give blessings either way to this kind of blessings. They never, their purpose was to give spiritual understanding and knowledge by which we can improve our lot no matter what our situation is. If it is our lot to, um, to academically excel and uh, to materially excel, if that is our karma and that is our effort, we will do it. But most important which is missing is what is our um, thinking, consciousness, understanding. And if we see it from a spiritual point of view, then we will see everyone as equal. We will not discriminate. Like uh, everyone sitting here, there is no discrimination as to who comes from which state and which background and so on. Same way, that uh, the, it has absolutely no meaning because we understand that we are here. All of us actually are, are meant to eventually, whatever uh, years we have, 70, 80, 90, 30, 100, finally we are going. So the, how can we improve this quality while we are doing our occupation duty? And in such a way that we don't consider that somebody is uh, greater than someone else. No, someone is more fortunate than someone, yes. Someone is more grateful because they have been given, and someone is more responsibility, but not that someone is greater because they have a certain background. So, we, uh, with all these um, um, aspects uh, that we may see in the modern society, it can be uh, a blessing, it may, it may not be a blessing. And, you know, even eventually, if you take, uh, if you have been given, say, uh, a healthy body, now, uh, definitely we would want to improve our health, but if somebody is not given a healthy body, now one can look at it this way that uh, if your consciousness is right, then with a healthy body you have more opportunity to uh, do nefarious activities. Because if you are uh, incapacitated or sick, you, uh, limitations are much more. So, you know, if you are given the… So everything depends on what we do. For instance, uh, the body can be used for, I mean, uh, you know, it can be used, uh, there is no limit to what we can do because today there is such a strong body consciousness that um, the people are willing to pay for anything. I mean, the, uh, there are billions of dollars of industry which are only focused on improving our health. So improving health is one thing, but if it is really to uh, enhance our looks and make money on that, then our consciousness becomes only focused on that. For instance, uh, recently there, a few days ago, there was an article which mentioned that um, of the top 30 uh, 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 superstars, uh, you know, who are earning all over the world, uh, seven of them were Indians and these seven Indian Bollywood superstars, each of them was earning, uh, earning between last June 2014 to June 2015 in one year, earnings were between 100 to 250 crores, between 15 to 35 million dollars. So if it is their karma to get that, they will get it. But 
if it is setting an example for people that that is the only way to, that is that he is my god then we are not different than pandrak that we are looking at that that the way he smiles the way she talks the way you know then uh, you know everything revolves around that there is no value to character so if there is a dealing between uh, god and our activities then this uh, this challenge becomes very um, very difficult <clears throat> so um, for a uh, for a person uh, for every living entity our goal has to be how we can uh, try to um, minimize our needs and maximize our effort to help others with whatever means we have and how we can do it in the spirit of uh, not considering ourselves superior which is very difficult because this is this uh, the single biggest uh, <clears throat> challenge that we have is to get away from the fact that i am doing something and if you have been given more attributes then it becomes very difficult that is why when we do it in association of devotees and under a certain uh, prescription of uh, sadhana bhakti or certain religious guidelines then that helps us within the uh, within the spiritual environment it helps us to slowly develop that feeling how we could um try to uh, dovetail our propensities in the uh, in the interests of others so any every activity that we do for the community or for the nation for others for the family others is good it is good because it helps us to do for others but if it is not linked with the uh, understanding <coughs> um uh, of uh, spiritual understanding then the danger is that that could only be finally at the end of it it is meant for me only i mean i should be benefited the most we will not be able to tolerate any difficulties any pain <clears throat> any challenges that come and we will do anything to try to solve our problem uh, by hook or by crook so to accept difficulties becomes a big challenge and especially for those who have been given a lot um in various attributes for them uh, it becomes very difficult to take back to uh, suffer setbacks uh, we have examples uh, king indra's uh, examples quite often comes that uh, in the govardhan leela uh, story also and how he couldn't uh, he was almost like a spoiled child uh, he is actually the lord of the demigods and he Uh, got so much involved in his um, in his own prowess that momentarily he forgot that he is actually on behalf of the lord and actually when the service the worship to him was uh, stopped he reacted in such a violent way he was willing to kill you know he uh, invoked the sambartaka clouds which are um, so powerful that there were there were seven days of continuous rain of such a level such magnitude that the rain drops were like uh, you know almost like pillars each drop was like a pillar we cannot envisage the kind of and it is only when the lord lifted the govardhan hill and got all the residents of vrindavan to come under that they were saved so this could be from a person who is a, a very favorable person a very intelligent person a person whom uh, is clearly uh, one to be respected somebody who is actually much much higher than us in all levels and yet it, it could happen to him so it's a lesson that uh, what is to what to speak of us we have no attributes compared to what lord indra has and of course he begged forgiveness later that was his greatness also but it is a very pointed lesson to us that uh, this overpowering illusory energy the maya is so strong that makes us feel that we are the doer that um, we can be swept aside uh even if we think so it's not like if we have been doing it becomes a habit and after 5 or 10 years or 15 years that we uh, we are now comfortable so it is like because it's not an autopilot you cannot put this because this is a it is a matter of applying our uh, mind heart and thoughts and words constantly you cannot for a moment deviate from that so you may act um, uh, you can do some actions which are you know uh, automated and sometimes it just happens very almost ritualistically but our thinking cannot be that our thinking uh, and the thinking influences the action so if our thinking gets deviated and the mind is something which is extremely fragile and gets uh, it can uh, slowly get influenced by so many things saying that 
you know it could be saying that well i have spent so much time chanting and i am coming to the temple for 10 15 years 20 years but um, i'm now finding that i don't get any benefit and see this person has not been coming and i see so much uh, that person is prospering so much that i think i should try something else so these kind of thoughts can also come so then we without understanding from the shastra or from the previous acharyas or from the present guru if we come to our own conclusions then we can see that there's a sign of maya which is actually taking us away from the right path and when that danger happens then slowly slowly we don't even realize it subtle things are more dangerous than gross things see if something were to hit us as a calamity it is a terrible thing but that's something which is staring to our eyes we understand but when something creeps in and you know if you see someone coming to attack you uh, it is a frightening feeling but at least you know what it is but worse is that if, um, if somebody comes and becomes your friend and uh, takes your confidence and everything and then slowly uh, finally you find out that he is your worst enemy and takes everything from you that is uh, more disastrous because you didn't recognize you could didn't uh, plan for it because you didn't know so therefore um, our understanding our approach entirely is based on uh, how we were to uh, to think um, so who is a real guru is a good question and again the there are many descriptions of course many ways to describe it but one very nice definition or one nice description is uh, shila prabhupad says is a real guru is one who actually increases our attachment to krishna decreases our attachment to material um, life and uh, gives us the knowledge to increase our devotional service because ultimately devotional service will encompass everything so this uh, this is the objective for us how we go ahead and he also gives a very nice analogy to understand explain that that uh, for instance you have uh, wood uh, now wood actually uh, has fire in it but the potential of fire is in the wood but the wood by itself uh, you cannot see the fire you know unless you kindle it but once you kindle it then it starts burning so he compares the the wood is like the conditioned soul and the fire is really the spiritual master so when you kindle it then when the fire is uh, lit then that means the it enhances our uh, uh, the fire actually not only destroys all the anarthas uh, uh, physically literally it may destroy um, many of the uh, the dirty uh, things but uh, internally it uh, just like the spiritual master gives us a knowledge it will destroy our anarthas our weaknesses um our um, you know uh, wrong habits if we were sincerely follow so this becomes a very important aspect of our life that uh, we should not um, deviate from that but it is very difficult because um, who is you know there's very if we are linking it to someone who gives us material objects and who actually uh, impresses us on a material level Uh, he may even be knowing a lot of shlokas uh, uh, and uh, that's uh, having a lot of intellectual prowess and knows uh, many of the uh, spiritual literatures at the back of his hand but it is not easy to judge unless we actually uh, compare it with um, shastra and compare it with the previous acharyas and uh, one very example good example of a material uh, guru with a material nature is given in the shastra uh, just to illustrate how dangerous it can be for us to understand the difference is uh, shukracharya uh, shukracharya was actually the guru of the uh, of the demons and uh, we may think that uh, you know we were look, talking about uh, present day uh, cheaters and some somebody will create some uh, objects and mesmerize some siddhis may be there and they may pretend to be god but shukracharya could actually create cities he could uh, create entire uh, cities uh, by his power and uh, when he because he was a demi- uh, the guru of the demons he was the guru of bali maharaj uh, bali maharaj who is actually also mahajan but he is born in the family of uh, demons he is a grandson of prahlad maharaj and he uh, this is at the setting when uh, the uh, Uh, after the manthan the the amrit has come and uh, this uh, the lord has come uh, in the form of Mad- uh, mohini murti 
to save the demigods because the demigods were almost wiped out practically and they were desperate. So they appealed to the Lord to save them from the demons because of the power of the demons. So Mohini Murti, this Lord Vishnu comes and uh, gives the, uh, the Amrit to the demigods. The demigods become very powerful. And with that power they come and they start annihilating the demons. So at that time, um, Shukracharya actually, uh, 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 no, th that happens and then uh, 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 eventually, uh, of course the demigods, um, no I'm sorry, I'm taking it a little later. Shukracharya, uh, the point I'm making is when Shukracharya, uh, uh, under his guidance, uh, the, the dem uh, that was the stage when the, uh, the demons were actually overpowering the demigods and um, uh, the demigods actually had to run. So there were different times when the demigods, uh, they of course became, uh, when Mohini Murti came in, they became much stronger. But when, at the time when the, the, the demons were overpowering the demigods, um, such was the power of Shukracharya because he was the force behind that when Indra asked his guru as to now what we should do, then he said, no, you, I think you better run. You, there's nothing you can do about it. And then uh, finally when um, Vamandev comes, uh, Lord Vishnu comes as Vamandev to save the uh, uh, demons, uh, demigods, and he comes and asks for three steps of land. And uh, Bali Maharaj uh, is a very honorable king. So though he is the king of the demons, but he has... Uh, he had his own principles and he, uh, he since he's a Mahajan, he also had a strong belief in, uh, in the Lord. So while he had Shukracharya as his guru, Shukracharya was someone who was so sharp that he could understand that this Bali, uh, uh, Vamandev, who came as a dwarf, um, was actually Vishnu. So when Vamandev came and asked uh, Bali Maharaj for three, uh, he only asked for three steps of land. And that was also at the urging of Bali Maharaj. Bali Maharaj said, you, why don't you, uh, please, I can give you anything uh, as charity. I can give you planets, I can give you cities, I can, you know, uh, take you to this uh, place. Whatever you want, I can give. But then we only asked for three steps. So at that time, the uh, Shukracharya actually warned Bali Maharaj. Because Bali Maharaj was about to sanctify it and give the blessing because he thought this is nothing. In fact, he chided uh, uh, the uh, Vamandev as to why you are asking for only three things and why you are asking for only these uh, three steps of land. I can give you so much more. So Shukracharya actually stops uh, or uh, Bali Maharaj and says, okay, you, don't, you don't recognize him because this Vamandev is just a small um, dwarf, young boy, I'm short but he is actually Vishnu and he's actually come to ask from you and he's going to ask you uh, these, uh, of, he, with two steps he will cover the entire universe and he's going to ask uh, and he will prove you wrong and he'll destroy you, he'll take everything away from you and you'll be left with nothing. All this uh, Shukracharya could predict and eventually that is exactly what happened because Vamandev took away everything but it was actually to enhance Bali Maharaj's greatness because Bali Maharaj showed his total surrender. But here we are seeing from Shukracharya's point of view that how, look at his power. He was so powerful. And yes, when uh, at the time when the demigods uh, got the Amrit and they, um, uh, they, uh, yeah, the sequence is like this. Um, that actually when the uh, Mohini Murti came with the with the Amrit and gave the Amrit to the demigods, they became very powerful. They defeated the, uh, they in fact killed Bali Maharaj. They killed Bali Maharaj, they killed his generals. They were actually dead. And um, Shukracharya then created a potion with his uh, mantras uh, and he then took the bodies and dipped them into the potion, which immediately brought back life. Not only that, they became so powerful and invincible and then they went to fight uh, the demigods and then the demigods were at the receiving end and that's when Brihaspati told Indra that you just run, you can't do anything. Then they appealed to the Lord and Vamandev came. So Shukracharya's powers were such and yet his was only a material vision. But see the limits, we cannot compare anyone today with him. But see his, uh, uh, see the limits to which that can 
go. So eventually for us to decipher whether it is uh, material or spiritual it becomes very difficult and confusing unless we have guidance and unless we have faith in the, uh, in the right source of uh, uh, spiritual knowledge. So, uh, and that right, that uh, if it's genuine faith, we will come to, if we really have a strong desire to, uh, to seek um, not for ourselves, but what is best for us, and uh, then we will actually, Paramatma in our heart will guide us, and we will come to uh, the, he will guide us to the right Guru. And in fact, Guru only will find us. Also in the story of Kalia, <coughs> Uh, we see that it is again a parallel because in today's world we uh, find it very difficult to uh, uh, that to um, if you have success to not be arrogant becomes very difficult and Kalia was the serpent was one who was very powerful very successful he wanted to cover the entire um, uh, lake which he was presiding over um, by himself and he had so much poison that not even the birds who were flying over, overhead uh, could survive. And even if they were thousands of feet above in the air, just because they came over the lake, they, they would die. So he made his preserve and he became the master of his lake and said, nobody can step in. And um, let alone dip the, go into the water, but not even come even near the, the lake. And um, because Krishna wanted to teach a lesson, there are many lessons actually which come out of this, but um, Krishna in his pastime, he actually, he, uh, he dives into the water and then as just a young boy and everybody, his parents and his friends and all except Balram, uh, they practically faint because they are so scared that he will be swallowed up. And Krishna pretends, he takes his time to really show his invincibility, but then eventually when he dances on Krish uh, Kalia's head, uh, hoods, thousand hoods, and Kalia was so powerful, but yet, you know, he had started vomiting, uh, apart from his poison, blood and everything, because he was, um, he was uh, helpless in front of Krishna. So, but Krishna saved him only because of the prayers of the Nagapatnis. His, uh, uh, Kalia's wives were actually devotees, and they prayed. So the prayer of a Vaishnav for us is very powerful. So if we have a sincere heart, we should pray for others. And we don't know how much, uh, or in fact, we should know, in fact, that uh, we are today, um, whatever benefits we are getting is probably because of the uh, prayers of other devotees. We have protected because of the prayers of other uh, sincere souls who have actually prayed for us causelessly. Not for any reason, but just because, uh, just to protect our spiritual life and to help us to uh, continue uh, onto this path. So Nagapatni's prayers actually saved Kalia, and then Kalia was spared. He, he didn't. Uh, he was not killed. But um, the story demonstrates that um, not only the prayers of the Vaishnavas are powerful, but also that uh, that Kalia, uh, from uh, you know, he had so many fangs and so many uh, hoods and such power. Eventually, they were all subdued. So we also have our own coils, you know, in the same way we may have this attribute, that attribute, this, that. So if we were to arrogantly use it against uh, others or against the Lord, uh, against out of envy, then we run the risk also of being uh, completely subdued. So it is better that we ourselves were to give, uh, to surrender to the Lord. And, uh, and surrender doesn't mean giving up everything. This, uh, surrender means that we give up our attachment and our sense of proprietorship. We do externally what we can, but we do it in following the uh, certain practices which can help us to be in the right uh, environment, right mood. So, uh, this um, approach is not a dogmatic, fanatic approach. The approach has to be out of deep conviction. It has to be out of understanding, out of debate, out of reading, and out of uh, fully applying it only when we are completely convinced. But to make the effort, to make that effort of uh, understanding this can only be us. Nobody can force us. As they say, you can take the horse to the water, but you can't make the horse drink water. That only depends on the horse. 
So similarly, uh, you may be… so we have to take this as a signal. If you have been given an opportunity to come, we may say that, well, the world is seeing differently in so many aspects. I mean, uh, when I go out on the road and when I'm here and when the, I, I may act in a certain way, but people, uh, everyone else is acting in a different way. That is not material, I think. We have to go according to what we, uh, what we have been taught. And because the behavior of a devotee is the criterion for all of behaviors. So we may not be a devotee. We are aspiring to be a devotee. But we have characters of various devotees in front of us who have uh, our gurus, acharyas, there are many great personalities. They are the, uh, so th their, their behavior becomes the benchmark, is the criterion for all other behaviors. Actually, uh, Madhvacharya said that, uh, he was asked, how do you judge a pure devotee? So he said that uh, you judge a pure devotee by the sound vibration of his mouth and the steadfastness of his uh, devotional service. Two things. Sound vibration of his mouth and steadfastness of his devotional service. And that we can see over day in and day out, week in and week out, month in and month out, year in and year out, decade in and decade out. And we see uh, that as a person who is constantly striving to give a live uh, entirely for others and um, give whatever uh, Krishna consciousness uh, that we can accept to us, then we should try to emulate that person and follow him. So then our behavior also can become a pattern. Because everybody has a role model. Role models are necessary and will always be there. But it's a matter of whom you select as a role model. If somebody, just because he is uh, worth 200 crores or 500 crores, that doesn't automatically become a role model. Or somebody who has um, extreme good looks, is blessed with the good looks. Or somebody who has a very sharp mind and has uh, got five inventions to his credit, doesn't automatically become a role model. You can appreciate, uh, you can appreciate uh, the, his attribute, God-given attributes. Uh, we can uh, see how glorious it is, just like we, uh, we, we see the nature and we see how glorious the nature is and uh, how the sun rises. Uh, nobody has to uh, wake up the sun or nobody has to uh, have any anxiety that supposing the sun doesn't come tomorrow, what will happen? Uh, with the sun, uh, how the planets are moving around in orbit, how from a seed, you know, human being is actually growing. So we can just marvel at that and then see that there's a link, that there is somebody who is a creator. Same way, if somebody has been given attributes which are, we don't become envious of that. If it motivates us to and inspires us to increase our effort to develop it in our lives, we should do it. But we can at least appreciate if it does have nothing to do with us. We may see somebody who is given an extremely, um, um, you know, has got special circumstances. We say that, well, you know, we, his personal life or her personal life will be between him and Krishna. But we can understand and we can appreciate that, how, uh, how Krishna has given that uh, particular attribute. And um, especially for ISKCON devotees, there is a very strong message uh, which um, we, we, that because uh, we don't uh, count for anything. None of us count for anything. Uh, we just uh, just a uh, straw in the wind. But uh, we represent, if people think that they're from the Hare Krishnas and how we behave and how we talk reflects on uh, Srila Prabhupada, reflects on Lord Chaitanya's movement, ultimately reflects on Krishna. But immediately it reflects on the, uh, as part of ISKCON, if we were to act in wrong ways, misbehave, or uh, act in a very arrogant way, or in a fanatic way, then uh, thinking that we are superior to others, and uh, because we are, uh, you know, uh, because I'm chanting so many rounds, because I come on Sunday to the temple, because I do this, because I do that, I know so many verses. If you think like that, then we are going to be... Um, losing whatever credits we have because these are actually aspects which we need to be grateful for, not something which we should be uh, think, claiming to be ours. So the circumstances by which has made us come here and got in touch with uh, devotees and somehow connected to Radha Gopinaji or um, Radha Ras Bihari or Radha Giridhari or any other temple or any other, uh, any aspect of God, 
uh, is something which we should be so grateful that it should make us uh, always motivated to uh, uh, dive deeper and see how we can quietly in our own way improve our lives. Thereby we can improve others. And automatically then we see everyone, we don't see people as enemies and friends. We, if people are harming us, we can certainly minimize, uh, we have to have the intelligence and the effort to try to protect ourselves. We can't be foolish enough to say, okay, this body is not mine, let him do what he wants. No. But at the same time, we don't harm others. We don't spend our uh, thoughts and mind and everything, you know, think that how I can destroy this person. Because we may, he or she will have his karma, we have our karma. But so we have to do what we need to do, but how we do it, um, if we are spending sleepless nights over that and uh, scheming and doing this, then then even our value of uh, chanting and reading books and all would be um, uh, reduced to a large extent. So we have to be very careful. Um, Radha Raman Temple uh, Shivatsa Goswami, once he mentioned a very nice uh, statement, he said that the integrity, um, the integrity, sincerity and faithfulness uh, of the devotees, uh, of ISKCON's devotees, he was referring to uh, devotees like us, I mean, who are uh, in the movement. He said the, the uh, faithfulness, integrity and devotion and sincerity uh, v uh, of the devotees is the only proof and it is sufficient proof of the authenticity of ISKCON. That means ISKCON's authenticity is, uh, the proof of it is the uh, behavior of devotees, uh, the, which is reflected by sincerity, faithfulness and, uh, uh, and integrity. So, uh, so there is, it's not a matter of pride. Of course, it's a, it's a matter of pride when we see others doing well. But it is more a matter of uh, grabbing an opportunity we've been given. We've been given this, uh, like we have so many, sometimes you get an opportunity in your occupation and you take it. But this is a matter of a life situation. So when we've been given this opportunity, we should take it and uh, know that uh, Krishna is a person. So we have a special relationship with him. We have a link with Krishna on a one-to-one -one basis. Our prayers are actually a link to Krishna on a one-to-one -one basis. When we are praying, when we are chanting, um, when we are doing kirtan, it is a collective uh, connection to Krishna. But when we are doing japa, it is a personal inter internal link um, directly. Every living entity, every human being has a link with the Lord. And that's that quiet hour that we are, uh, He's listening to us, we are talking to Him, we are expressing ourselves. So to the extent that we are able to do it in, that, in the right time, right mood, right consciousness, to that extent our communication improves. Just like if you have to uh, go to a public speaking event, you have to give a class, or if you have to give a, go to give a lecture to a, in an auditorium, uh, you are going to prepare yourself well and you think so many things and what to say, how to start and what to end. But uh, you know how to speak also, right? Because you want to capture the audience uh, attention. Now here Krishna is waiting. He is the supreme master, and he is waiting. He is your entire audience. So if we were to see that way, that he is the audience, he is actually listening and he is, he is more keen for us to come to him than we are willing to go to him. So if that, um, then even our communication to him through our chanting would improve. But the challenge is that today we are facing a very depersonalized world where with uh, progress, um, the personal connections become less, you know, even our gadgets for instance, um, technology is advanced and you can misuse it and you can use it well. But if you were to use it as your own improvement of your uh, entertainment, then uh, you again are extolling your own personal uh, happiness and uh, you are not concerned with the others. And what I see in my life the last 30, 40 years, I see with the increase of um, uh, improvement in gadgets and technology, actually it is making people more self-centered because they are happy within themselves uh, there is, um, uh, you know, with their own blackberries. Actually, they, they say that now uh, there is a, what they call a blackberry prayer. Uh, a blackberry prayer is, uh, you know, when you are praying, you are always sitting down and praying. <laughs> so, in, in, even in board meetings or in other meetings, people are looking down, but they're not. They're praying, they're, they're looking at their messages or they're actually uh, playing games, video games. So, it becomes, uh, it just consumers. 
So I'm not saying we don't have time for that, but it, what, it, it, we have to be alert that it actually, um, it's very likely that it just sucks us into that to such an extent that we, uh, we send messages to people who are only in the next room. We don't even walk across and talk to them. So it has health benefits because uh, means if, uh, if we were to minimize it, our health will improve. If we start walking again, which people have forgotten, you know, our consciousness, our emotions, you know, people are, uh, you are not concerned with the outside world. Today, a lot of times you see that people are not bothered about, um, you know, they would rather be smart than intelligent. Uh, they'd like to be, uh, as we say in English, chalak. Chalaki, I mean, if they, you can, you may, you may be able to extol, you know, and know what to repeat and uh, how to improve your marks in your exams. That is only one aspect of it. But real intelligence to actually understand um, and observe what is happening in society and the world at large, and also um, to decipher this that uh, while everything is going on, good or bad, things are happening nicely for me. Things are, I'm having problems. Start thinking to introspect. So that needs a um, certain amount of awareness and uh, which is be becomes less because you are on a very um, imp uh, impersonal thing. And, 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 the, and the whole environment is such. In many countries when the social security net is there, which is there to help the people who don't have, uh, um, uh, who are deprived, you know, the, of the, means they're poor, underprivileged, so they, the, the nation supports them. So they have a social security number. So you are like categorized. So it's like that. So then you you become a number. You become a statistic. Uh, even uh, people who uh, now, when we hear of uh, you know 40, 50 million abortions a year, we think that 40, 50 children are being murdered. But nobody thinks that way because they consider it removal of tissue. They will only say it is. They don't even consider it. As, so it's a. It's become highly impersonal, depersonalized. So everything becomes. Uh, um, you know, so the convenience, uh, it becomes inconvenient to have God in the, sin, in the presence because um, if without Him, you know, you can carry on with what you want. If you see even the science fiction uh, movies or uh, you see, you know, the popular ones like Spider-Man, Batman and Superman and um, or the, the good, you see that good prevails over evil, but there is no God. It's only the human being who is the master of his destiny and who can improve the situation or it may be an alien force that can you but you will not bring in uh, so it is as if that eventually you have the powers to overcome your own uh, problem so this mentality gives us the it becomes inconvenient to have someone like uh, uh, god who you can you don't see you don't know who he is and and um, why bring someone else because he has his own message and he it may be not particularly convenient for my approach. So it's gradually come to a level where uh, you uh, first used to write a large G, capital G. Now I find, uh, rarely you find the word God, but you know, they also, they now put small G. So you know, they, it's uh, minimizing the presence of uh, God. It makes you feel that actually when you bring the topic of God, it means that this person is, you know, what, you know, he, he's, he's uh, not a very practical person. He's a very impractical person. He just talks about God. So we don't talk about God in our occupations. Fine, we have to work and we do what we have to do. And we must do the best we can. But the, in, this is why we talk of Krishna consciousness. That means we are conscious of the fact that we live this life ultimately for one major responsibility, which is as a human being and what we can do. And externally, we have so many responsibilities. We should see that because of the presence of the Lord, our external responsibilities of being a son or a father or, or a husband or a wife or an or a employee or an employer, whatever, or a citizen, uh, those responsibilities also get enhanced and we can do it better. So there is a connection. You cannot distance itself because if you do it, you may think you're doing well, but your activities also are eventually, because even charity can be in the mode of ignorance. Charity can be in the mode of passion. Because you can do charity, but you are in, uh, enhancing only your reputation. You may be wanting people to know that you're doing such. So, uh, or you may be just wanting to address it, uh, address the bodily needs, thinking that uh, the, you know, even if you don't have a, your personal motivation, but your own thinking is that, let me just see if we can, you know, we, 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 but if you're actually trying at the same time to see how their internal consciousness changes in some way, then 
that's uh, that can only come when we have given attention to this so my point is that uh, the warning is that we have to be careful that in this world of depersonalization we should be not forget that krishna is a person and then each living entity is a person so our connection is on a personal level and therefore um, feelings matter how we talk the sensitivities of others consideration for others becomes very crucial and if you and that becomes easy if we were to try to follow uh, from the point of view of the Lord. If he's seeing everyone as one family, then we also try and see as one family. There's a variety in the family and there are, uh, there are room for differences. You may also not be very uh, comfortable with A, B or C, but you can respect people. Because you know, you, you have your own weaknesses, someone has his own, each one has their own style, her style, his style, those are not material. They're not so important. You know, naturally in a class of 40, you may have five very close friends, but doesn't mean that 35 are enemies. In school, we don't see that way. You know? Then you may have a little quarrels here and there, but by and large, you have a, because children have a certain innocence which makes them so they will gravitate towards those whom they are comfortable with. But the remaining, then at least they have a friendship, a certain level of uh, friendship, um, which may not be intimate, but which is um, healthy and respectful. So that's what we should, need, and that health it gets enhanced if we were to see it as one overall purpose not um, uh, from the point of view of Pandrak, but from the point of view of Krishna. So we'll end here, if there's any, I don't think we have any time for any questions. Uh, uh, any mic here? We will have five minutes. Haribol uh, for this lecture. Okay, I just wanted to know that uh, we are like uh, eye centric. Most of the people are eye me mind uh, the the centric, but we should be uh, uh, we should be Krishna centric. Uh, so like and because of Maya, that is uh, the uh, conditioned soul which uh, uh, which we get attracted to. So how can we be far from that and and we can be more to Krishna centric nature like. So there is a certain process that we uh, follow. Uh, one is that we uh, we follow certain regulative principles. Uh, we uh, we avoid certain things which are uh, uh, detrimental to our, uh, which are uh, which can harm us. Uh, we avoid sinful activities. We avoid certain things to eat or to drink, etc. And at the same time, the we try to. Uh, follow process of uh, coming closer. So starting is really Shravanam. Shravanam, Kirtanam, as I say. Shravanam is the first the service that we're doing. Actually, at hearing the words of the Lord, Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, um, either reading it directly or hearing the uh, messages is the first step. Because that then gives us the faith. The little faith that is there becomes stronger and then we become uh, more convinced about... And if we have doubts, we can check this. So then we systematically uh, follow the process and if we uh, come to a stage where we can actually start chanting the names of the Lord, that also helps us. And then at the same time, we do externally what we have to do. But, um, so we don't have to, you know, now think today in 24 hours, how many times I thought of Krishna. If you are following this process, automatically you will be having a lot of thoughts. And then when you go to work, you don't have to worry that, well, I went to office at 9.30 or I went to work in my shop and I came back at 7 and I never thought of Krishna once. Don't worry. If you are following this practice in the morning and if you're following the practice in the evening and at the same time, yes, there is a Krishna's presence is there because you automatically will be uh, influenced by, in your behavior, by how you talk. You will be conscious of the fact that um, if you have, let's say, hypothetically, uh, a very uh, hot temper, uh, you will uh, definitely feel that, well, today I lost my temper and uh, maybe I'm doing, uh, I've been losing my temper five times a week. You'll come to a stage where it'll come down to twice a week. And again, sometimes you may need to be angry uh, deliberately because it is necessary because somebody is cheating you or somebody is not doing. I'm not talking of those issues, but sometimes it may be just because you are provoked and you just have an outburst on your child or wife or mother or anyone. So, as an example, I'm saying that if you have some weakness, then you will start uh, trying to minimize it. So, a process is perfect. The question is whether we sincerely try to follow it and then 
just give it time because you know we are uh, told in the shastra we have come into this human life after so many years so it doesn't mean that over uh, after how many lifetimes in fact so it doesn't mean that it will change overnight so we have to be patient and follow the practice but then we have to follow it uh, sincerely and attentively so basically avoiding certain things uh, chanting the names and uh, as much as possible that we are hearing uh, the philosophy and people what they do is that um, they hear it at home also means they have um, when they are going to work also they are hearing in the train or in whatever mode of transport i mean it, that depends on what wherever they get the opportunities then weekends are there then the services that one can do one starts getting into it so then that gives us the um, that we are then doing for others rather than for ourselves and service on, doesn't only mean in the temple service means at home how we live with a husband or wife uh, that is the first uh, service that we can do that we can Im implement what we are doing then with our children and with our relatives family members uh, we should be seeing from that point of view that we behave much better with them so all this is actually service We end here. Grantra Shimad Bhagavatam ki jai. Shila Prabhupada ki jai.